Jack Vance is known for his influence on Gene Wolfe and Gary Gygax. He utilizes brevity to make swift tales and worlds mixing science and magic. And while the world is cynical with the impending doom coming from the sun that's about to burn out, the writing itself is not nihilistic, but very lighthearted in this picaresque story. Hello, and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himvar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Robert Jordan's The Eye of the... Uh, uh, scratch that. I'll be reviewing Jack Vance's The Eyes of the Overworld. The Eyes of the Overworld is an episodic novel first published in 1966. It follows the anti-hero and protagonist Kugel the Clever. This is the second of Vance's Dying Earth books, but has no relation to the first beyond the same setting of the Dying Earth. In a world thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years in the future, where the sun is red and the sky indigo. It may be of note that though this book came out in 66, the first book was released in 1950, making this essentially pre-Tolkien fantasy, which isn't too hard to see since there is hardly any semblance. Most chapters were originally published in pulp magazines, though chapter 6, The Cave in the Forest, was first published in this compilation. Each chapter on its own could be considered novelettes, with chapter 6 being a short story. Kugel is a classic anti-hero. He's a complainer and scoundrel that leaves destruction in his wake. He is a self-reported ladies' man, though this doesn't seem to be the case. At the start of the book, he is caught stealing from a powerful magic user, the laughing magician Yukonu. I have no clue how to pronounce this properly. Anyways, to escape an ugly demise, he is forcibly sent by this magician to look for a magical relic, the aptly named Eye of the Overworld, one to match the one the magician already possesses. Yu Kao Nu? Is that how you say it? Whatever, the laughing magician has a creature from a distant star placed in Kugel's body that hurts him when he isn't working on his quest, and Kugel is promptly transported to a locale far away to search for the magical item. On his quest, he lies, cheats, steals, he gets people killed, sells others for meager reward, and even manages to destroy an entire town. While he makes things bad for everyone else, he doesn't get off easy and suffers a lot. He doesn't really learn anything from this suffering, you know, when everyone else would have had chances to grow and find something to learn. The Eyes of the Overworld is weird fiction, and often very silly. For example, about halfway through the book, Kugel happens upon 50 men that are said to range from 3 inches in height to over 12 feet. They are led by an overseer that is 3 feet tall with a forefinger that is over 30 feet long. Things like this are very common and the humor often made me smile or chuckle. Vance also utilizes the most absurd vocabulary. Just for example, here are some words that he uses in his writing. Equipose, epiphyte, adumbrate, interconjugals, suprapropylation, pervolve, and countless similar words are present, half of which I'm not convinced are actually real words. The magic in this world is very obvious an influence on Dungeons and Dragons. And Vance is even credited in the famous Appendix N for the first Dungeon Master's Guide. Some things in D&D are pulled straight from Vance's work, such as the spell Prismatic Spray and the magical item of Eon Stones. I also think the rogue class has a healthy helping of Kugel in it. Suffice it to say, it was always fun when a magical item or sorcerer was introduced in the story, for Vance is very imaginative. The history you get in this book is also fun, though I wasn't able to connect anything in the world of the Dying Earth to anything precisely in our world, which makes sense seeing how far in the future this is. But also compared to the first book, which I believe had one brief reference to a deity, we hear about more gods of this world in the eyes of the overworld, and see certain faithful and learn some doctrine and dogma. Vance is excellent at moving the plot along with unexpected progression, and oftentimes surprising twist, even up to the last page. This really lends to the story's brevity and fast-paced plot that seems to come out of nowhere. Overall, I enjoyed Google's blunders and unintentional consequences, but this book did have a harder time keeping my attention when compared to the first. While fun, it's nothing spectacular. I'd give it three stars and say that it's good, just not great or even exceptional. Chapter four, for Resum the Sorcerer, was probably my favorite chapter. And I like how well chapters one and seven connect. This may be slightly spoilery, so close your ears for just a couple seconds. But I appreciated how Kugel gets what he deserves at the end of the book. It was a long time coming. Okay, spoilers over. I'll also add, I've only read one Discworld novel so far, but I had the thought that fans of Discworld may enjoy this. I did some research on how to say our anti-hero's name. It seems that the author intended for it to be said Kugel, as opposed to Cudgel, which is how I said it most of the story. Regardless of how you say his name in your head or out loud, he's still one heck of a scapegrace. I actually read this as part of an omnibus that contains all four of Vance's Dying Earth novels, which you actually see on the screen right now. There are two more sequels. 
the direct one being the third of the Dying Earth stories, Kugel's Saga. It was released in 1983. Interestingly enough, there is another authorized sequel by author Michael Shea, released in 1974, called A Quest for Symbolus. I'll definitely be reading Kugel's Saga at some point, and maybe the book by Shea, I can say I am intrigued. I do also want to get to Vance's Demon Princess books after finishing the four Dying Earth books, and hopefully soon I'll get to the Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, which I've heard took heavy inspiration for its setting from Vance's Dying Earth. Have you read any works by Vance? What are your thoughts? And are you interested in reading The Eyes of the Overworld if you haven't? That basically wraps everything up, though I would like to take this time and say thank you for everyone who's subscribed so far. I'm really surprised with how much success I've had. And if I can keep up these videos, I'd really like to release them every Wednesday and Saturday and make blog posts for every Monday and Friday. This is not a commitment to that, and if I somehow end up with a ton of videos, I'll post more often. I'd also like to mention that starting on August 4th, I'll be playing Dungeons & Dragons on Rinfail's channel for a couple hours every Wednesday for a couple months. This will be at 8.30 Central Time, and we will be playtesting the campaign setting that Rinfail, his wife, and his brother have been building, along with a novel and a point-and-click adventure game. I'll link his channel below. Anyways, that's all the news for now. This has been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. You can find me on the Excessive Detail Discord, and I'm often active on the Wizardly Duo Discord as well. That is the Discord for Nico's book reviews and Andrew's Wizardly Reads. Remember to like and subscribe for more bookish content, and until next time, peace.